Starting us off at number 10, we have sea pigs. If you think these things look anything like actual land pigs, you are sorely mistaken. They are indeed pink, but other than that, they look like something from outer space. These undersea creatures are actually a species of sea cucumber. Their scientific names are scotoplanes, and they are found at the bottom of the sea floor in the colder regions on Earth. You will probably never actually come across a live one for that matter, but if you could, they would be able to fit in the palm of your hand or about four to six inches in length. So I guess that makes them more like sea miniature pigs, maybe? I don't know. These weird pink little creatures can often be found in groups all facing the exact same way, and they feed off scum that they find in the mud on the ocean floor, which include decaying plants and animals. So they truly do eat <laughs> like pigs. At number nine, we have the skunk bear. Just kidding, that's just its nickname, which I didn't know at first. But these animals are actually wolverines. Have you ever wondered what these things actually are other than muscular X-Men characters? Well, these creatures actually live in the Arctic and subarctic regions and are nowhere near as cute and cuddly as they look. Okay, well, they are cute, but let me tell you, these things are dangerous. They have been known to take on wolves and bears with their ferocious claws, which is why the X-Men superhero is named Wolverine. Anyway, there are no known Wolverine attacks on humans, but that's just as long as we leave them alone. And they are also known to travel up to about 15 miles per day. And with their razor sharp claws, I'm sure no animal will stop it in its tracks. At number eight, we have permafrost. What is permafrost? Well, permafrost is basically frozen solid ground that stays frozen for over a period of two years. You can notice this kind of natural effect in areas of higher elevation where the temperature on average falls below freezing. The ground beneath your feet will stay frozen completely for years. Imagine a Canadian winter. If you're not from an area of the world where it snows, then just imagine a thick layer of pure ice on top of your property that never ever melts. That basically is what it would be like to live on permafrost. So for anyone that ever wanted to go or try ice skating, grab your stick and lace up. At number seven, we have my favorite one on the list. We have the Northern Lights, also known as the Aurora Borealis. You have probably heard of these before in movies or in science class, but in case you haven't, the Northern Lights are multicolored lights with blues, purples, greens, and whatever, and they move and they shine throughout the northern sky. This happens when particles with an electric charge are released from the sun into the northern atmosphere of Earth and are mixed with gases such as nitrogen and oxygen. I am lucky enough that I have been a witness to the Northern Lights a few times as I grew up a bit more north, but I've never actually been that far north to see them in their full glory. But it is on my bucket list to go as far north as I can to see these amazing lights because I truly do think they are one of the most magical natural lights one can see. Weird, but breathtaking. At number six, we have New Islands. Back in 2013, near the fjords in the Arctic, a new island was discovered. This island was only recently discovered because it is actually split off from North Brook Island in Russia. With global warming affecting our colder regions more and more, the melting of the ice caps and larger ice land masses lead to more splits within the ice. Due to this, we see more and more ice structures appearing and disappearing all of the time. So we might continue to see new land masses in the polar areas of Earth, which sounds really cool, but Let's hope we don't find any more. Let's keep that ice frozen, shall we? At number five, coming in at our halfway point, we have bounties of oil. Most of the world's industries are constantly in search of oil, producing oil, buying oil, selling oil, all that fun, outdated stuff. But funny enough, in a study that was completed back in 2008, there's reportedly 20% of the world's undiscovered oil deposits up in the Arctic. No wonder Santa has been camping out up there for this long. His entire workshops run on the stuff. But seriously, it's 2021. How have we not exhausted this source yet either? Well, it's because with the ice melting from global warming and such unpredictable terrain, we don't think we are ready or have the ability just yet to retrieve that oil. If anything were to happen, it could be catastrophic. So for now, let's just leave the oil where it is and maybe work on a more green and lasting resource, huh? At number four, we have the half year of darkness and half year of light. That's right, if you live up in the North Pole, then starting September 25th, you will experience a half year of darkness, and then another half year of light after that. How does this work? Well, the Earth is on a tilt of 23 and a half degrees. The Earth then orbits around the sun, and starting in late September and ending in the end of March, the North Pole is on such an angle that most of the sunlight doesn't actually hit it. That being said, it doesn't go immediately pitch black because the sun does reach the pole for a bit longer than September 25th, but eventually it does become dark as night. After March 22nd, though, the exact opposite happens. So if you want to live up in the North Pole, maybe figure out 
if you're a night hawk or an early bird first and then decide which season is best suited for you. Oh, and uh, <laughs> say hi to Santa for me. Starting us off in our top three, at number three is a frost virus. Yeah, guess what folks, there's another virus out there and it's in the North Pole. Recently, scientists completing tests in the North Pole found a 30,000 year old virus that stayed alive in the ice. Yikes. I know what you're thinking, we have had a rough year and a half already with this coronavirus crap that we don't need any more of this stuff and I agree with you, but luckily for us, this frost virus doesn't actually prey on humans. Scientists have called this the molivirus or sometimes even known as behemoth. Why? <laughs> I don't know and maybe I don't want it. But scientists have also discovered more viruses up there, but it hasn't been reported exactly how many. For now, I got other things to worry about though, so like, as long as I know this molivirus doesn't prey on us humans, I'm okay. It actually only preys on amoebas, so they won't ravage our planet anytime soon, <laughs> we think. At number two, we have ancient mummies. Back in 2017 in Siberia, scientists discovered something quite surprising deep within the ice, or should I say, someone. In the frozen depths, Siberian scientists uniced what is believed to be a 900 year old Russian woman mummy. She was found within the permafrost just within the Arctic Circle. It is believed that she is from a medieval civilization and was the first woman to be discovered at the site in a long ago society that was made up of mostly men. What then happened was scientists also uniced a mummy baby not too far away from the woman. As sad as that may sound, these findings brought huge joy to the scientists because it brought us the possibility to learn more about this medieval Arctic civilization. That's really cool and all, but really, I just want them to unearth some elf mummies. I want to know how long you've been up there, Santa. Huh? And finally, coming in at number one and my second favorite on the list, it is just so wickedly mysterious, we have unexplained holes. Back in April of 2018, researchers and pilots flying overhead discovered these large crater-like looking holes. According to National Geographic, scientists still have no freaking clue on what is making these holes. However, there is a color change in the ice right around the perimeter of each hole, which leads scientists to believe that these holes are the result of a temperature change and that the ice is melting. Okay, you know what, as of right now, I guess scientists do have one hypothesis on why these holes are appearing. They believe that it might be due to the fast melting polar ice caps and that these are just small little areas that warm up and give way, but I don't know, that doesn't really make sense to me because it seems to me that these holes are melting on the surface, not underneath. So maybe it's from a landing vehicle, maybe not human tech, maybe it's the aliens, I don't know, or maybe maybe I just think way too much about aliens these days and you know that's that's probably more like it. But anyway, there you go. Unexplained holes. Number eight, emperor penguins. They're as glorious as their name hints towards. I remember watching Happy Feet a lot growing up. I was really into penguins and tap dancing for a hot minute there. That movie changed the game. The main penguins here, they're all emperor penguins. Robin Williams' character, Lovelace, he's a rock hopper penguin with the cool, you know, the fluffy eyebrows. The other guys are all emperor penguins. The colorful orange necks, the OG characters, they're all beautiful. They're the largest penguins on the planet and their breeding habits set them aside from the rest. Once the female lays an egg, I'm not gonna do sound effects for this whole process. I don't know why I did that. That's <laughs> so stupid. Once the female lays an egg, she'll leave it with her mate for an incubation period, but she'll walk over 50 miles to the ocean just to get food. The mate has to fast for around 100 days just waiting for his next meal. Once in the water, these emperor penguins really go for it. They soar. They can dive up to 2,000 feet, which is far deeper than any bird in the animal kingdom. And they can hold their breath for around 20 minutes, which is incredible. The longest I've gotten is three minutes, but I'm coming for you, Mumbles. Number seven, chin strap penguins. Okay, from happy feet to slappy feet. Chinstrap penguins are the most aggressive of the penguin family. They're crazy. These guys are nuts. They're tiny. They have to be aggressive. I mean, look at them. They only grow up to 30 inches in length. They're so tiny, but again, they're so aggressive. They only grow up to 30 inches in length, so they have to be, you know? These ones don't tap dance. They actually crump battle you. Yeah, they embarrass you in front of you and your kin. Chin straps are small and quick because their diet requires them to be. With krill wading 50 miles offshore, chin strap penguins have quite the commute. Their thick skin is also quite literal. Their blubber keeps them warm during these long commutes. As long as no leopard seals show up, their commute is pretty smooth sailing. Number six, the sea spider. Okay, we had a few ha-has with the penguins. Now it's time to get weird. Now we know why we're here. The sea spider, thankfully, is not an actual spider. It just looks like one, kind of like daddy long legs. This is a daddy cold legs. It's a marine anthropod, and the reason it's so haunting to look at is because of polar gigantism. Many species have this. Their climate being so harsh, lack of nutrients, lack of sunlight, 
invite friends, family, etc. Scientists believe it's because sea spiders have slowed down their metabolism, so much so they require a small amount of oxygen to survive. So over time, the oxygen around these sea spiders turn them into like Captain America. They just juice them up. They take on way more than they're adapted to. And in turn, we get giant terrifying sea bugs. Nice. Number five, scale worms. Upon first glance, again, scale worms look microscopic. They look like tiny bacteria that are covered in scales. Hairy, weird, gross scales. They're pretty horrifying to look at. These guys are actually eight inches long on average, so they're not tiny at all. This is what they really look like. The Antarctic scale worm is covered with elytra, these natural bristles. But the most distracting feature here has to be its mouth, head, mouth thing, yeah. This part on its mouth can literally fully retract. It can go inside out, yeah. It can suck its own mouth inside of its body, and then when it's time to eat, it pops out and then claws its prey to pieces. Horrible. I saw a video of it, I almost threw up. We went from happy feet to retractable mandibles. Cheers, that's how we do it here on MA. Number four, glass sponges. Antarctic glass sponges. They don't get their name because they're translucent, they get their name because their skeletons contains silica, which is a literal component of glass. How neat is that? Back in 2013, a massive discovery took place. Scientists figured out how these glass sponges grow in size. Well, they figured out that they do grow in general. As our ice shelves slowly disappear, the numbers of glass sponge sightings they increase. They don't hunt down prey at all, obviously. They spend their entire life quite still, just eating the leftovers that happen to drift along their merry way. Their food was so sparse as well, for a long time it was fully believed they couldn't possibly grow. Because what would they possibly eat? The more we learn about glass sponges, the better, because these little guys tell us a lot about climate change. We're like, how is it happening? What's going on? Nothing's happening. We're, they don't talk much. They're really quiet. They don't have mouths or eyes. Number three, the springtail. Also known as the elephants of Antarctica, springtails are hexapods. They're exclusively land animals. Whereas penguins, they sometimes, you know, bop and swim. These guys are only on land. They're tiny as well. They measure up to about a millimeter on average. They look like earwigs almost. Ice earwigs that eat bacteria. Horrible. They got a big old butt too, so you're probably gonna notice if you see one walking by. They live on average one to two years, and they produce glycerol, which helps them, you know, not freeze to death. That always helps. Antarctic springtails live longer than springtails in other parts of the world because the frigid temperatures, again, slows their metabolism down so much they can just survive off basically nothing. They're not immortal, but as far as ice insects go, they're, they're close. They're pretty mighty. Small but mighty. Number two, the hoff crab. When these creatures get their names, it's often in relation to their appearance or their super ability. The immortal jellyfish ages in reverse. The glass octopus is otherwise see-through. The hoff crab gets its name because it looks hairy, like David Hasselhoff. He's hairy as well. Yeah, David Hasselhoff just tweeted the hoff crab with this photo. So random, imagine following him and you see this, you're like, what's going on, why? We love it. The scientific name later given was Kiwa Tyleri, appropriately named after its discoverer, Paul Tyler, from Southampton University. Found in the East Scotia Ridge on the Southern Ocean, where the water is too cold for the hoff crab, these guys are just covered in bacteria, hence their hairy hoff look. Because it spends so much time staying warm near hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor. The guy literally just sits around a deep sea campfire just collecting ice cold bacteria. What a, what a wild life. He's a deep sea hairy caveman, essentially. When it comes time to eat, the hoff crab just scrapes off a little bit of bacteria from any part and then just gives himself more food. He gives himself a little haircut salad. We love those. And finally coming in number one, the colossal squid. Not to be confused with the giant squid, those are similar but smaller. Still terrifying but more petite. As its name gives away, the colossal squid is much larger. They live in the darkest, coldest depths surrounding the waters of Antarctica, and these squids, on average, they're around 46 feet in length, with the females being the largest of the species. The biggest and baddest, of course. They have large tentacles with suckers equipped with razor hooks, so whatever it does grab, it's certainly not letting go anytime soon. Its diet consists of large fish, and when I say large, I'm referring to, you know, seven foot long Patagonian toothfish, not a goldfish. They're colossal, and they try and fight whales sometimes. They're crazy. They have no regard for the size of others. They're gonna fight anything and everyone. They're more often than not marked up, suggesting they've been in a few deep sea tussles. On top of being magnificent, they're quite mysterious. Only two specimens have ever been collected, with the second being recent in 2014. Some believe this is the closest living relative to the Kraken. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Sound off below. Either way, I'm gonna go throw up. I never want to see any of these in real life. Awesome. Kicking off the list at number 10, ice worms. Yeah, ice worms. Need I say any more right there? Ice worms, that's terrifying by themselves. I'm dodging these suckers all spring. Now I gotta worry about winter too. Get out of town. I'm Canadian, we don't need ice worms. Come on, we have ice in general. That's bad enough. 
The only time a worm lives its life in glacial ice is in, you guessed it, Alaska. Yeah, all these things are in Alaska, in case you didn't already know that. All my life I've seen worms shrivel up and fade away on the sidewalk. They just evaporate, it's so horrible. But I've never even seen a worm near ice. Is that even possible? Apparently so. They're supposed to run out of fuel and die off, but ice worms are like the Energizer Bunny. These things just keep going, even if they're frozen. Little Captain America worms. Should that icy temperature rise, however, above freezing, well, that's when it becomes slower and dies off the way that we see every worm go. You know, just uh, in a horrible, gross way. Honestly, these things are super cool. I'm not a fan of worms, obviously, but scientifically, these guys are so alien. They're pretty cool. I had to kick off the list with them. Teach me your ways. I'm always so cold. Again. Canada. I'm just kidding. That's fine. Number nine, banana slugs. This one's pretty gross too. I'm not gonna lie. Get the gross ones out of the way right off the hop. Banana slugs get their name because of their yellow color. They are not yummy. They have nothing to do with bananas. They do not taste like bananas at all. Nothing like banana medicine. That one's pretty close. They're also quite large, these slugs, but the thing that really sets them apart here is that they have a single lung that's exposed. I know. As I said that, you probably went, ugh. Yeah, it's horrible. It's one of the worst things I've read. Alaskan banana slugs are dark green, so even creepier, dare I say, than the average. And these slugs need to stay wet at all times. I wanted to say that they stay, you know, something that starts with the letter M, but we don't like that word, apparently. This word would have been perfect for said organism. Moist. There, I said it. <laughs> these slugs are also hermaphrodites. They have all the reproductive organs needed for the fun, only after a mating season, they'll kind of black widow the other party. Yeah, nature's wild. Olivia, don't eat me. Thanks. Number eight, new whale species. You may be thinking, how does one miss a whale for this long? Aren't they insanely large? Haven't we found them all? I would hope. Well, when a 20 foot long whale washed up on the beach in Alaska, researchers studied it and came to the conclusion that this species of whale, specifically called the Baird's beaked whale, upon further investigation is part of an entirely new species of whale. Yep, we thought we knew what it was. Mm -mm, different. A new whale from 2014, and we didn't even know it for a couple years. This new discovery has darker flesh, and the dorsal fin was bigger and floppier. <laughs> it was bigger and floppier. Imagine a scientist saying that. Uh, yeah, it's bigger and floppier. They're like, great, heard. The only other whale with the same genetic code that can be studied was found in a nearby high school gymnasium. Yeah, not alive. It was the skeleton. It was just, you know, up there for morale, I guess. Nothing gets the kids going on the beep test then. A skeleton above. Just a whale skeleton. Like they were in the Avengers and they just, I don't know. Where is this? Alaska? Wild. Next time you talk smack about your high school mascot, make sure it's not a rare fish that's previously undiscovered. Yeah, always take a look. Check yourself, Bradley. Stop making fun of your mascots. My mascot was a dragon. But not like a cool dragon though. He was like a lame dragon. I'll move on. Number seven, needle snout monster. This one comes from around 200 million years ago, so not that new. This fossil had been discovered recently, however. It was discovered back in 2011 on an island just a few feet above sea level, so it was almost pretty close to fading away forever. It looks like an ancient iguana, almost. It's a marine reptile thalatosaur. It's a new discovery from that time. This thing was roaming around Alaska 200 million years ago. I used to think humans were born too late. This pointy-nosed dude has changed my mind, my friends. We love science. We love finding things late. It's the only intact thalatosaur fossil ever discovered in North America, which is pretty sweet. Pat Drunkenmiller, director of the University of Alaska, Museum of the North. <laughs> Sounds like something from Game of Thrones. The Museum of the North. He really thinks this is a fascinating find, and rightfully so. The snout is pointed. It's literally razor sharp. This guy would have been an absolute menace back then. Thank God he's gone. Now instead, we have to deal with these guys. Number six, nudie bronx. Ah uh, yes, nudie bronx. We love saying it. Go tell all your friends. Hey, you know what I learned about? A nudie bronc. A nudie bronc. These little things are so strange, I cannot wait to talk about them. These soft gastropod mollusks are too cool for their shell. Yeah, they're so fancy, they're just like, mm, I'll just be naked forever, no problem. They show it all, no shame. They're fancy sea slugs, basically. Their colors have made them the subjects of many nicknames. Obviously, these have been baffling sailors for centuries. There's more to them than you'd think. They can smell and taste through their fingertips. What a feature. I can't tell if I would want this or never ever want this. What's cooking? <laughs> That's horrible. I would eat things through my hands all the time. Oh my God. It's still treats from my friend's backpacks. There's over 3,000 all waiting. There's over 3,000 types of these dudes all waiting to be explored on Alaskan's ocean floor. If you want to get an up close look yourself, just know they're quite good at absorbing toxins from predators and then storing them for later on. So tread lightly. 
Don't be poking anything. Watch out for colorful deep sea spaghetti. Always keep your eye open for deep sea spaghetti. You'll see them coming also. These things are giant and they look like they're from Avatar. You won't miss them. Number five, a strange catch. When you fish off Alaska's coast, you really never know what you're in. Sea creatures are already creepy enough, but imagine pulling up this thing. Back in 2019, an angler named Sarah Alford pulled up this alien looking sea creature. And when she posted her catch online, everybody else was like, great. What is it though? <laughs> and no one had any idea what this thing was, including herself. Everybody was just as confused as she was. What planet did you catch this thing on? The clip got millions of views, no problem. People were upset in the comments even, saying not to pull him out of the water because he couldn't breathe. But then other comments are like, yeah, but why? What is it? Is it a fish? Does that mean that's a fish? Turns out this thing is a basket star, a species of shinoderm, AKA sea star. Yeah, it's just a fancy starfish. Yeah, not all starfish look like starfish. Sometimes they look like inside out aliens. Sometimes they look like haunted bowls of ramen. The more you know. Number four, pyrosomes. I've said it once and I will say it again. The ocean, the sea, hell, even the lake sometimes. Nope, not going in. I'm gonna stay dry forever. It's home to a lot of weird stuff. There's a lot of weird stuff hiding in the water. Starfish that look like they're inside out, jellyfish that age in reverse. It's all truly alien. The more we find, the happier lad I am on the land. Like pyrosomes, for example. This is straight out of, I don't know, hell. These tropical tube-shaped sea creatures are appearing in the millions near Alaska. Why? Eh, wouldn't you like to know? They began to show up back in 2017 and we're still figuring out what's going on with them. They're these foot-long tubes. They're these glowing sea tubes. They look like deflated sea pickles almost. They're so odd. Just sad sea balloons. Researchers at NOAA's Alaska Fisheries Center are shocked because they've never seen pyrosomes travel this far north before. Where are they going? Why? Why is it becoming a common sighting in Alaskan waters now? These numbers are so high that when fishermen are finding them, they're clogging all their gear up. Yeah, their nets are just layered in this goop. Just jellyfish balloon goop. Nice, we love it. Number three, the basking shark. Translating to large-nosed sea monster, nice, for good reason there, I guess. The basking shark is something I hope I never run into at any point in my life. Even in an aquarium, I don't wanna, I don't wanna see it. I'll close my eyes and walk through that entire exhibit. I don't wanna look at it. They swim around the surface of the water, first of all, scary, and search for tiny food. They search for plankton. Despite how big and scary their mouths are, their meal is preferably tiny. Basking sharks will go years without seeing one of these. Basking sharks will go years without seeing one of these, but once we do, we're in luck because more often than not, basking sharks will travel in large numbers and they're found in both the Atlantic and the Pacific. As of 2019, basking sharks were considered endangered thanks to overfishing. Yeah, they have some biological mysteries behind them though. The basking shark mouth is massive and like I said before, quite scary, but otherwise it's pretty normal. Basking shark females, however, they only have one functioning ovary and it's always the same every time. It's always on the right side and we're still not quite sure why. Number two, red squirrels. Okay, so Olivia told me recently that black squirrels in Toronto, they aren't a thing everywhere. They're not a thing in Regina. But over in Toronto, my whole life, I've seen black squirrels everywhere. Maybe even more so than a brown squirrel. So this one I had to throw in because I simply don't know anymore. My whole life is now a lie. I could be colorblind for all I know. Because now we got red squirrels over in Alaska. Like red, like mighty red. These things look like Vikings. A common sighting over there. They have these cute white bellies. They look straight out of a fairy tale. That's another thing. Every time you see a squirrel in a book, it's always brown. I can't confidently tell you what color squirrels are anymore. Zebras, I got, that's fine. Zebras, no problem. Squirrels, no clue. The only squirrels I see downtown Toronto look like they just got a buzz cut out of nowhere. They're like losing hair. They have bald spots. I don't know. These squirrels are up to no good. I don't want to know what's going on. You ever see a squirrel that clearly just got into an altercation and you're like, hey, little guy. <laughs> I can't talk to Toronto squirrels. Squirrels are too scary. Alaskan red squirrels, those are awesome. We like those. Those are probably a bit more gentle. They don't have to dodge taxi cabs. And finally, number one, the king crab. Okay, I am not great with spiders. You've seen this, you know this on this channel here. And crabs, in case you're wondering, nope, no better. They're larger and they can swim. <laughs> Two more red flags, my friends. Not a big fan of crabs, but the Alaskan king crab, they're, they're honestly pretty impressive. I had to put them at number one. They're an OG. They have the name Alaskan in their name. You know what I mean? They've made their home. 
These king crabs can reach up to five feet wide. A giant sea spider, great. But instead of eight legs, they only have six. But the massive claws that resemble boxing gloves, those don't feel too good on your skin. You wanna avoid that. The bizarre thing about these yummy sea creatures with the Alaskan king crab is that their right claw is often way bigger than the left. And that claw is more often than not their weapon. That's their go-to weapon. So they're not right or left-handed. They're just like, oh, what's bigger? This one, sure. That's how they pick which-handed they are.